We're flying from Chalinda Airstrip to Mizuzubo, and we clear Malawi customs there. From Mizuzu, we fly to Mukwe in Zambia, gateway to the South Luangwa National Park. The terrain is very different from what we have just left. We clear Zambian immigration and customs in Mukwe and meet our guide. On the road to Nakula Camp, there are little shops selling anything and everything. The accommodations at Nakula Camp are spacious and open air with an unobstructed view of the river. The bathroom is open air too, with outdoor showers. As we start our first game drive, our guide says there's a pack of wild dogs near. The African wild dog, also called the African painted dog, is an endangered species. It's estimated that in total, there are 39 subpopulations containing 6,600 adults, but only 1,400 of those are full grown. The population is declining due to habitat fragmentation, humans, and disease outbreaks. These wild dogs are only distantly related to the domestic dog. Besides their long legs and big ears, they have no dew claws. Their teeth are different, and they have no undercoat, just stiff bristle hairs. Males stand two to two and a half feet at the shoulder and weigh 45 to 55 pounds. The female is slightly smaller. They live in permanent packs of between two and 27 adults and yearling pups. Only the dominant male and female breed, but the whole pack helps raise the pups. They are specialized pack hunters of medium-sized antelope. Nearly 80% of all wild dog hunts end in a kill. Compare that to lion's success rate of about 10%. This is a great start to our visit to South Luanga National Park. We meet at 6 a.m. in the library bar for our morning game drive. The sunrise over the Luanga River is beautiful. Nakula Camp is on the riverbank opposite the National Park. We have two ways to get into the park. If the vehicles are already on the park side, we can take a small boat. If not, we take a very ingenious ferry. It holds one vehicle at a time. The ramp on the park side is made of sandbags that are moved to adjust to the river's water level. It's powered by two ferrymen and, a, and the driver if he's so inclined. The Luangi River starts near the Tanzania-Malawi border in northeast Zambia and flows into the Zambezi at the Mozambique-Zimbabwe border in south-central Zambia. The river flows through the Luangwa Rift Valley, which once was the lake rivaling Lake Malawi in size. Today, the valley is 60 miles wide, and the river's floodplain is 6 miles wide. As one would expect, the riverbanks attract a lot of wildlife. One of the many highlights of this trip was watching these Thornycroft giraffes crossing the river. There are about 1,500 of them, and they are only found here in South Luangwa National Park. The river supports large populations of hippos and crocodiles. During the dry season, the floodplain becomes a grassland with marshes and isolated pools. The marshes are full of storks, herons, egrets, and geese, hunting for fish, frogs, insects, and mollusks. There are smaller wading birds too. This bird was named for its wattles. While this one with some pretty impressive wattles is only named for the white stripe on its head. Warthogs forage the marshes for roots. 
baboons will graze on plants, but also eat any fish or insects they find. And the crocodile will eat anything that gets too close. Much of the park is savanna woodland. Elephants prefer the tall grass close to the river. We notice several elephants without tusks and ask why. Normally less than 4% have small or no tusks. But due to poaching here in the 70s and 80s, a study in 1989 showed that 38% of the elephants have no tusks. Darwin would be proud. The elephants appear very healthy with lots of little ones and some big ones. Impala prefer the short grass savanna. As does the puku, a smaller cousin to the waterbuck. Zebra can be found in the margins of the Mopani woodland. They are crochet's zebra, like we saw in Malawi. Of course, the forest margins are a great place to find birds. They're mostly perching birds. This impressive bird is a male in breeding plumage. The body is five inches long and the tail is 15. After breeding, they lose the tail feathers and become just another LBB. We spot several varieties of dove. And a few ground birds in the underbrush. And a couple of large raptors. The Thornycroft giraffe is one of the nine subspecies of giraffe. It's estimated that there are 1,500 in the wild and none in zoos. They're an isolated species living only here in the Luangwa Valley. They're named for Harry Scott Thornycroft, a British civil servant at the turn of the 19th century in northern Rhodesia, now Zambia. Giraffe subspecies can be differentiated by the colors of their coats and the shape of their patches. The Thornycroft's coat is light cream with dark brown patches. The patches are notched and don't extend to the lower legs. Our guide says they have socks on. On our last day, we get a special treat, a bush brunch. We take a break from our game drive and sip wine the chef puts the finishing touches on our brunch. Wolfgang says, I'll drink to that. The Mopani woodland is not exactly a forest as we would think of one. It's a savanna dotted with stands of Mopani trees of varying densities. Woodland bird species hide in the highest and the densest stands. This kingfisher may look out of place in the woodland but they prefer it. They eat a varied diet of insects and frogs, but seldom fish. From the road, we see a very large male leopard in the grass. He's well known to the guides. He's blind in one eye, so he doesn't hunt, but he's big enough to take away a kill. So that's his strategy now. African buffalo look dim-witted and nearsighted, but neither is true. They have keen senses. They are one of Africa's most dangerous animals, consistently killing over 200 people each year. Looks can be deceptive. Each of these animals weighs up to 2,000 pounds. They seem like big domestic cows, but there's a reason that they've never been domesticated. They are very unpredictable. We watched this herd for some time, getting spa treatments from the oxpeckers. 
Lions are the apex predator in this area. So what happens when lions and buffalo meet? Buffalo will attack lions, but do they even see them? What will trigger the attack? Will they walk away? Here's the answer. The buffalo sent the lions packing, and the lion doesn't look too happy about it. After all that drama, it's time for sundowners, and a beautiful African sunset. And now it's night drive time. One night we watched this leopard stalk a herd of impala. Every time we moved the vehicle closer, she would use the noise and the motion to disguise her own movement and get closer to her target. Then back to Nikwila Camp, on the ferry, in the dark. It's been quite an adventure. Three countries, four national parks, and wine too. Thanks to our fellow travelers for sharing their wit and good humor with us. A very special thanks to Wolfgang for showing us the way, to Conrad Henning for making all the arrangements, to David Van Niekerk for opening his winery to us and sharing his knowledge.